So the fruit of the Spirit, that's what we're talking about in this series. Um, and we've talked a lot about, about like, you know, each week we've spent some time in your groups. We spent some time, last week we spent the whole time in your groups where you're able to digest each and every one of those things. Hopefully you're here for that and it was, it was helpful for you. But um, we all have things about our own lives, ultimately, that we're proud of and that we're not proud of. Things about ourselves we love and things about ourselves that we really don't love. So what I want you to do right now, because it's easy to point out the negative, I want you to turn to somebody next to you and, and tell them one thing that you really like about yourself. Okay, what's one thing you love about who you are? You got 30 seconds, go. One of the things that I've really liked about myself is, is that like, I feel like I make friends easy. Like I, I'm most of the time a pretty uh, agreeable person. Like you're not gonna offend me super easily. And, uh, and I might offend you, but I'll do it with a smile on my face and then you still like me kind of. So um, that's, that's one thing that I've, I've kind of noticed about myself, especially when I was your age. Um, my, my friends and I, like, like nowadays, like, if, sometimes it feels weird to, like, like call people out for something because they're going to think that you're being mean or whatever. But, like, when I was growing up, we were just mean and it was fun. Like, like, we, we, like my, my buddy and I, if we'd be doing something stupid, we'd be like, bro, you're being an idiot. Stop it. Sorry, man. And we'd, like, keep going. It was fine. Not a big deal. Or, or like, if, if one of us did something awesome, which was pretty often, you know, we, we'd look at each other, dude, that was so sick, high five, like, because we, cause we're really bad at, like, handshakes and stuff, but, but you, know, you know what I'm saying, like, there's, there's stuff about, like, you in, in your friend group, the, that you, you know each other well, and, and maybe, maybe your family, they know you really well, and so maybe this whole idea of finding out what you're really good at or, or what you love about yourself is really easy. Maybe you're surrounded by people that just care about you and that, pour into your life and are able to tell you the things that, that they love about you, the good qualities that you have. Um, maybe, maybe some of you don't have that. Maybe for some of you to think of a quality about yourself that you like is really difficult. And, and, and that's, that's understandable. Maybe, maybe you have a bit of a temper and there's someone in your family that can just call it out like easily. And so maybe, maybe that's where you are. Maybe, maybe you struggle to, to keep up on the team and your coach is constantly like telling you to step up right? Or, or maybe you got grades that are tough to maintain because school just doesn't come naturally. And so it's, it's difficult and you feel like, like a failure half the time. Um, or if you're like me in my math classes and I was like, like geometry, when you sit at a table with everybody, like I, w I didn't do that until I was in high school, but I sat at the same table with a bunch of smart people. And I felt like an idiot all year in class. And like maybe, maybe, maybe that's where you're at. Maybe you can relate. Maybe it's not always, you know, being patient with your siblings or people in general. And so um, those are qualities that it's, it's easy to focus on the things you don't like about yourself. But it's really important to focus on the things that you love about who you are. It's really important to not get discouraged by where you're at in your journey in life because that is not a defining factor in who you are. It's really easy to define ourselves by our shortcomings. But that's not the way that God defines us. And the fruit of the Spirit... Uh, helps us to see that clearly, more clearly because it means we're walking in step with His Spirit. When we walk in step with His Spirit, not only do we have a better view of, of ourselves, but on others, we have more patience because we see people the way that God sees people, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I, we, we could honestly go on and on about the stuff like that maybe you are struggling to like yourself over because, let's be honest, a lot of us have a lot of things that, that make liking ourselves really hard at times. Uh, maybe it sounds exhausting to you or overwhelming to think about all of those things or to even try to think of something that you, you love about yourself. Uh, maybe you've never thought about this before, and that's great. You, you haven't wor worried yourself with, you know, what other people think or, like, you're not self-conscious about the way you look or self-conscious about the things that you say or the way you talk or, or the, the things you like and stuff like that because, hey, you, no one's ever feel, made you feel bad about those things. That's, that's great. And everybody's at a different spot. But no matter where you are in this conversation, I know that this is something that is true for all of us, right? Um, that whether, whether you're in middle school or you're an adult, we're all coming into the person and becoming the person that we're going to be. Because we're, this is a lifelong journey. We're constantly growing. We're constantly changing. We're constantly, you, you know, adjusting to our, our situations. Maybe our situation changed. We got to adjust again. That causes us to grow in a different area. We're all moving up the grades each year. And so school becomes different. And we grow. We learn. 
all of us are constantly changing and learning and growing each and every day. That means there's always hope, right? You are not the same person today that you were a year ago. How many of you fifth graders in the room, you were like in elementary last year? Like, you're not the same person now that you were then. And it's easy because, like, you're in a different school building, most of you. And so, like, it's really easy to be like, yeah, I'm not that person. I'm in a completely different place now. Some of you, maybe, maybe you're in eighth grade or sixth grade, and you're at the same school this year that you were last year. And, and now you're like, well, not a whole lot has changed in my circumstances, but I'm thinking differently. I have maybe some different friends. I, things have changed in my life. Like, there's, we're all constantly learning and growing and changing, which gives us hope to know that the fruit of the Spirit can be produced in your life, even if you are terrible at some of them now. And, and the, the good news about that, it, the, what makes that so good, is that it's not necessarily dependent on your will, your willpower, or your ability at times, because the fruit of the Spirit is evidence that the Spirit is living inside of you, and He's the one changing you, and developing you, and growing you into the person that you strive to be. So, once again, we're going to put up Galatians uh, 5, 22 and 23 on here, which are the fruit of the Spirit. It says, the fruit of the Spirit, let's actually say this together. Ready? One, two, three. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, which is patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, we've been talking about this for, this is our week four in this. But what's really cool is, is, is what Paul also says in his letter to Galatia. So if you remember, Paul is writing to the church in Galatia about what it means to follow Jesus. He's talking about what it, it means to be liberated, be free in Christ. Part of that has to do with the fruit of the Spirit living inside of us. But he, he, this, is, this is what he says in, in earlier in his letter. He says in chapter 2, verse 20, he says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Right? Now, at first glance, you look at that and you go, well, I've, I've been crucified with Christ. I, I haven't been, like, maybe, maybe you're reading it like, I haven't been crucified with Christ. Like, I'm, I'm still here. Like, I didn't raise from the dead. Like, so that, that might sound weird at first, but basically all he's saying is like, I gave up my old way of thinking, my old way of life for the sake of the Spirit living in me and me living the life that God has called me to do. To do as Jesus did, to walk as Jesus walked, to love as Jesus loved. My old self has died off and my new self is alive in Christ. And it's this beautiful picture that no matter where you're coming from, this is, this is possible for everybody. Again, because the Spirit's transformative power is working inside of you. Even right now, the Spirit is working in each and every one of you. That's why, when, when we talk about baptism, like, we believe that the, the Greek word in the New Testament when it talks about baptism is immersion, um, and, and to, to immerse. So when we do baptism, that's why in our movement we don't do the sprinkling or anything like that. We, we immerse in a tank of water because... The symbolism, that's what they were talking about in the New Testament. That's what baptism looked like. But also the symbolism of dying to your old self, like being put in a grave and then raising back to new life just as Jesus did. So when Paul talks about uh, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, he's talking about the Spirit. The Spirit transforms us and guides us and moves us and produces in us his fruit. And that's, that's what's encouraging about this. And that's what Paul is referring to when he's talking about this. So, um, th think about it this way. The Spirit is inside of us, and, and if we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, He is the one that is going to transform us and give us the strength that we didn't know we had. That's why I, I, elsewhere in Scripture it says that it's in our weakness God's strength is made known. He, his power is made known in our weakness, because in our weakness, in our shortcomings, the Spirit supplies something that we didn't have on our own. Like, there, I, can, I can tell you, there's been times I've been talking with people, and, uh, and I'm a pastor, so I talk with people a lot. And uh, I like to think of myself as smart, but um, there's, there's conversations that I've had, maybe that you've had, that you have no idea what to say, right? Maybe somebody asks a really good question, or maybe something really hard is happening in life, or maybe someone's just asking for advice. But there's times, even though I fancy myself as a smart person, I, I don't know everything, right? I, I don't know the answer to everything. 
And I certainly don't know what to say to everybody in every situation. But there's been times where I'm talking with somebody and I feel like I just gave them a really good answer or gave them something like that I felt was like straight from God. And it was like, I didn't, I didn't think of that. Like, I mean, there's some stuff like I had listened to something a while ago or maybe there's something in the dark recesses of my mind that just somehow made its way back out. But it's like the Spirit ordered my words to come in a certain way to speak to somebody in that moment. And, and I know it because usually it's like, oh, wow, Zach, that was, that was smart. I didn't, I didn't mean to say that, but there you go. Sometimes it's, it's just while I'm preaching even, that'll happen. Sometimes it's, I get this little chill that goes down my back and I'll get like the warm and fuzzies. And like, I know that sounds weird, but you guys know like when it's cold and it's fall and you're out at a bonfire and you drink some hot chocolate and you're like, mm-hmm, like, it feels good. Like sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, sometimes I'm unaware when the Spirit's talking because people will come back and say something later that like, oh, that had an impact. I was like, oh, I don't even remember saying that, right? But like sometimes when it happens, if I'm real fired up about something or if I just was at a loss for words, but I like I was speaking, I feel like that's one of my spiritual gifts is, is that I, I, I don't know how God does it, but somehow through me, like sometimes, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, guys. There's times, there's more times I say things I regret than times that this happens. But when this happens, like it's the spirit at work and there's, there's no denying that whatever just happened was a work of God. But that happens when the spirit is living inside of you, transforming you and bringing God's best out of your life. And you are the vessel for his spirit to change the world around you. And that's incredible to be a part of. And the Spirit is at work in each and every one of you. And each and every one of us have, have different gifts. Things that we're good at, things that we're not good at, but different ways that the Spirit will move us because we're in different places and have different relationships. And that's great. That shows the diversity of how God can work through anybody. But that's what Paul is saying. It's no longer me who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me through His Spirit. And so it's, it's really, really incredible. And, uh, and that's what he's talking about. And, and think, about, think about it like, because um, there's, there's plenty of times, you know, where, like I mentioned and like we've talked about already, where you, you, you do things you regret or you say things you, you, you wish you didn't say or, or you don't quite accomplish what you wanted to. Think about it like this. Everybody understands how baseball works, right? Like you go up to the plate and your, your goal is to like hit it as far as you can so you can run around the base and score a point, right? A home run would be great, right? If, what, if, what if you walk up to the plate and you could hit a home run every single time, right? That would be awesome. Corbin, you follow baseball. Is there any baseball player who has never struck out and who has hit a home run every time they approach the plate? No? Never? In the history of baseball? No, okay. So if even the pros can't do that, like, what hope is there for you and me, right? The same is true when it comes to our faith. Right? You're, you're walking up to the plate every day that you wake up. In every interaction that you have, you're stepping up to the plate. You have an opportunity to give fruit from God to others. Sometimes your fruit's going to be pretty rotten. Can I get an amen? Right? Sometimes it's going to be the best tasting fruit ever. We're not going to hit a home run every time. But that, that's not the point. The point is stepping up to the plate every time and allowing the Spirit to do His work in you. And the more you do that, you know what? The odds are you're likely to hit more home runs. You're likely to, to go and, and, and make it on base. You're, you're likely to hit somebody else home every time you step up to the plate. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. The Spirit living inside of you transforms you and you have to consciously make the decision I'm not, I'm going to die to my old self. I'm not going to live by the way I want to live. I'm going to live by the way God has designed me to live. And in that, I will find fulfillment. I'll have better relationships. I will have a healthier life. And those around me will be able to be transformed by the love of Jesus. Our faith isn't really about doing anything. It's about letting the Spirit of God do His work in each and every one of us. That's the point. And I know that that's that's happening in each and every one of your lives. Right? There's some of you that already volunteer in different places. But it's not necessarily about 
that some of you, you just have a way with your words. You have a way of when people come up to you somewhere, anywhere, maybe it's here at church, you're able to include anybody in the conversation, make everybody feel welcome and warm. Some of you do have insight into things beyond your age. And you're able to see things for the way they truly are. Some of you have this great ability to show kindness to others regardless of how they've treated you. And let me tell you, that's a gift. There are not very many people wired that way. But some of you are. And, and I love any opportunity, whether it's here at church or whether it's at camp, and I get to spend longer than like an hour with you on a Sunday morning. And I love seeing those things play out in your lives. I love watching the Spirit at work in the way that you interact with each other and the way that you come and you build each other up. I have seen that happen. And it's a powerful thing. And so our faith isn't really about doing anything ourselves. It's about allowing the Spirit of God to use us to do what he wants to do. So my challenge for you is just to look for the Holy Spirit in you. Don't look for, I mean, it's good to evaluate yourself for where you can get better, but don't focus on that above the Holy Spirit. I, somebody told me this when I was younger, and uh, it's always stuck with me. If I tell you right now, as hard as you can, do not think about purple elephants. Stop it. Don't. Don't do it. Don't think about purple elephants. You're doing it. Stop it. Stop thinking about purple elephant. Right. I'm going to think of a yellow one, so I don't think of a purple one. But that's exactly my point. Like, if you focus and look for where the Spirit is in you and what He's doing in your life, you will be less likely to be focusing on all the areas in your life you're frustrated with yourself in. And while there is a point where it's good to evaluate yourself and focus on the ways that you need to grow, you cannot spend all your time on that because if you focus on where the Spirit is moving, those things will take care of themselves. But if you spend all your time focusing on it, it's kind of like in baseball. If you're, if you're throwing the ball, this applies to football, basketball, baseball, anything with a ball. If you see a defender out of the corner of your eye in, in, on the soccer field, or if you see, um, you know, if, if you're trying not to look at something and get distracted, if you're pitching, which I, I was in Little League once, I did pitch for a while, like, if I'm thinking, don't hit the batter, don't hit the batter, and I throw it and try to focus on the strike zone, I'll hit the batter every time because I'm thinking, don't hit the batter, don't hit the batter. This is, this is like a psychological thing. It's proven. Like, if you're trying really hard not to hit something, you'll probably hit it. But if you're focusing on the target, you'll hit the target. And so the same, the same is true. Look for where the Spirit is in you. So one, think about yourself. Think about the ways that the Spirit is moving in you. I, I asked you earlier to talk about one of the things that you love about who you are, focus on those things. Think about those things this week. Uh, what are the habits that you have that you like? Where, where do you show kindness? When do you feel joy? Evaluate those moments. Think about those things when they happen. Secondly, look for the Holy Spirit. When you think about yourself, when you think about these things, look for where the Holy Spirit might be moving in your life and identify it. If you're having trouble, talk with your small group leader. They can help you process out loud what you're thinking. So look for the Holy Spirit. Where do you see him expressing joy in you when you shouldn't have any happiness because of your situation, but you see joy and you feel joy because of the Spirit working in you? Where do you have peace in your life? Where maybe the Spirit is interceding on your behalf to allow you to have peace when ordinarily you'd be freaked out about something. Look for where the Spirit is moving in your life. Look for the Holy Spirit in you. So as you go to move and talk in your groups, I want you to think, what's one quality of the fruit of the Spirit that you see in your life already. What's, what's one of the fruits of the Spirit that you see produced in your life already? I'm going to pray. I want you to spend some time in your small groups, and then we'll be dismissed.